Hi, my name is Paula of Paula Ponce Nails. I am a licensed manicurist here in the Los Angeles area. I'm also a certified Japanese gel instructor. Today's lesson is going to consist of encapsulating glass paper or embedding it into nails. Let's get started. glass paper film, a pair of scissors, sharp scissors, tweezers. You're also going to need a contrasting color. So because we're going a little darker here with our green, you're going to want to uh, have a color that's lighter or similar to it, just much, much more lighter than it. So I'm having, or I'm using here a uh, sort of glass translucent green to contrast my uh, darker green glass paper. Now I'm going to show you a very easy way to encapsulate this that's going to uh, be less messy and require less effort, I believe. Okay. So once you've applied two, color, two coats of the color that you've chosen, you will cure that and then you will apply a base coat of your choosing. I'm going to use Leaf, Leaf Gel Premium Base Coat. You can use whichever and for this next step, you just have to remember to use a very small amount of product. I'm going to take product and place it on one side of my brush. I'm going to apply it with gentle to firm pressure onto the nail. And again, I don't need to go really, really thick with this base, just a generous amount. Once I've applied the base all over the nail, I'm going to take my glass paper and I'm going to cut it into thin strips. Now the key when encapsulating glass paper or foils is to cut your sections relatively thin. If you cut your sections thicker, your sections will stick out of the nail and you're going to need to apply much more gel in order to encapsulate it. Um, sometimes you might be able to get away with uh, putting it on the wet gel, putting your glass paper, overlaying it with a base coat and then a top coat. But most of the times you're going to have to in, lay it into the wet gel, cure it, then pass over a coat of builder gel, builder gel or another hard gel. And then you're going to have to buff this and top coat this. Now, yes, that is more steps. It's not a, it's not a, a wrong way to do it and I do recommend doing it that way. But this technique that I'm going to show you is going to make sure that you get the thinnest encapsulation possible with gel so that your nails are not too thick or bulky and that you achieve a natural, you know, sharp looking kind of encapsulation. So let's get started with that step. My recommendation is to always cut the amount of foil that you're going to use. For this nail, we're just going to need a piece like so. Always make sure to close your products after you're done using them, setting them off to the side, and always work neatly to ensure that you work effectively. All right, so now my, tr my trick is to, rather than just cutting triangular shards off of the foil, is to keep the foil on one, hand, one side of the hand here and cutting the paper relatively thin up and over the size of the nail. So a little larger than your actual nail. Make sure your cuts are slim and thin so that they don't stick out when you're embedding them into the wet gel. You don't want anything that the client's gonna be able to pick at or rub on to stick up, up from the nail. And it really just takes about six, I would say anywhere from five to seven uh, separate cuts for you to get like the right amount that's going to cover 
enough surface area and then now to give you that glass paper nail look so my tip for doing this technique is to actually not individually cut every single little piece of glass paper and to rather just cut it long enough to cover the nail and also to still stick onto the entire piece that you initially cut that way you will have less mess and you don't have to go in fishing for the pieces if you work with glass paper before you probably didn't realize that it gets stuck to everything it gets stuck to your hands it gets stuck to the scissors it gets stuck to the nail to the paper any surface really um sort of like the static pulls it into it and, and so it gets kind of messy in a sense and you probably end up wasting more glass paper than you ought to so this way you can take the sections that you cut and just inlay them onto the nail like so now what you want to do at this point once you've already set the glass paper on there is to take a pair of tweezers and inlay or push down the glass paper onto the wet layer of gel that you've applied initially. You want to separate all of the cuts that you've made and when you are happy with uh, the way these are placed you'll want to cut the end of the glass paper sheet that you started off with. Alright, so right about now I'm about to cut the remaining piece of glass paper that I'm not going to use. And I'm only going to keep the pieces that I am going to use. Alright, leave that on the side as you may need more, but for now this looks sufficient to me. Now take your pair of tweezers and start pulling and adjusting the glass paper where you need it to be. Notice in one step, I've been able to do this entire nail, really encase the whole nail, without getting too messy or having pieces of this glass paper, you know, going all over the place or sticking onto me or the table or the paper or anything other than the nail that we are working on. And this is primarily the main tip that I want to share with you, that these glass paper nails can really be a walk in the park if you just, you know, note these simple steps down. All right. And the really cool thing about gel, as we all know, is that you don't have to cure your nail until you're happy. So feel free to play with these uh, paper until you're happy. All right. Now everything's nice and thin, so I'm not necessarily concerned of any of the pieces sticking up and causing any trouble when I'm about to inlay them or encapsulate them with an additional coat of gel. Everything pretty much fits onto my nail, except the side pieces, which is totally expected and normal. So what I would do now is take your pair of scissors, make sure they're really sharp craft scissors so that you can smoothly cut away at the excess. Once you're happy with your new trim, you are gonna go ahead and cure this for the recommended time of your base gel. In this case, uh, we are going to do 30 seconds because I'm using a base that's not not curing with the manufacturer's lamp so that's why i'm going to do a full cure of led um, curing for 30 seconds and take your time during this step really make sure that everything is pushed down so that you don't have to buff over any pieces and remove the shine or the effect the glass paper effect of what you're trying to create All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds. And what's going to happen in there is basically the gel is wet. So when I've inlaid my foil paper onto it, the gel, while it's curing that wet layer, is gonna start pulling my foil into it. So in a sense, is going to start the encapsulation process, if you can imagine it that way, where we're gonna have half of the layer 
of gel already curing and pulling that foil into it. And then we're just gonna take another thin layer of gel and finish that encapsulation. So where, for example, in acrylic, you lay down your medium that you're working on, in this case, foil paper, and then you take a large bead of acrylic and then you encapsulate that. That usually creates a thicker, bulkier nail. Not sure there might be professionals out there that can do it in a thin manner with acrylic, but from what I've seen in my experience, that's what I find um, that acrylic or maybe a hard gel will do it. It'll just really bulk up the nail. And what I really like about these uh, semi soak off gels is that, um, semi hard soak off gels is that uh, you can create thin encapsulations without jeopardizing the structure or the contour of the nails. The nails still look natural and they're full of fun and bedazzle and they're not looking thick or unnatural. So now that that's cured, I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna finish the encapsulation with a, uh, I can go ahead and do it with my base, but I like to take an extra step and really make sure that stuff is really encapsulated that I, so that I can go ahead and puff over it. And I find that my semi-hard builder gel, and I'm just gonna stick to the same company since I do have it available. That would be my sculpting gel here from Leaf Gel. I'm just gonna put a thin coat over that. I'm gonna buff that into shape and I'm just gonna apply top coat and that would be all. You can use the same brush or you can use a different brush. Make sure you wipe it so you dry clean it. And take just a very thin but generous amount to cover the remaining um, encapsulation of this glass paper. Start at the cuticle area and then bring it down thin. If you feel like all of your paper, because it does depend on the curvature of the nail. If the nail is a little bit more curvy, you might have more paper sticking out. If the nail is more flat, then you might not incur that problem and you might just be able to get away with another base uh, layer application and a top coat layer. But I find that most of my clients have a curvier nail, so I do find myself needing that sculpting gel, builder gel, hard gel, semi-hard gel to encapsulate the nail. So that's what I'm doing now. This nail for me is a little bit curvier, it's not too flat. And so I'm just taking a thin amount, thin but generous amount of sculpting gel, which is in this case from this brand, Leaf Gel Premium. It's a semi-hard gel, so it's soak off, but it still has a lot of properties that a hard gel will, will have, such as building, structure, hardness. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it as, base value for a hard gel in this case, but it's completely soakable, so if you're into soak off, this is a great product for you to use. All right, so once I've known that I put gel all over uh, the foil where I need it to be, I'm gonna look at the profile of the nail and add additional gel where I need to. Now the really cool thing about gel is that you can just wait for it to self level so that you can minimize the amount of buffing or fouling that you're going to do. I find that with these products, which are soak off potted gel, you need to do very little uh, minimal buffing and uh, use very little product. Whereas with perhaps a hard gel, in the a hard gel or acrylic product, you have to use more and you also have to foul down a lot more. So personally, I think that's a waste of product. Um, maybe other technicians can do it easily or whatnot, but for me, this is what I'm trained with and what I've been doing for the last almost four years. So very little product, you can preserve the integrity of a thin natural looking nail, adding nail art to it. It doesn't have to get bulky or thick. And I turn my nail over so that gel self levels and so that I'm able to create a smooth surface because the more smooth surface that I'm able to achieve, the less buffing I will need to do. When I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and cure that. And my final step is gonna be taking, we're gonna do a full cure for that, 30 seconds. My final step would be to buff and file that nail and add top coat. Now when you buff that nail, when you're working with nail art, or encapsulations, you want to work with a very gentle buffer, i.e. something that's 220 grit and nothing really 
lower than that. Perhaps if you use a 180 grit buffer, that's fine. Just make sure that you're not applying too much pressure so that you're not taking too much product off and then uh, digging into your foil. You'll also want to work with a very gentle file. This one is an emery board. It's not very gritty even though it's 180 uh, grit. It's very gentle and you can use this to retouch any of the um, free edge that you need there. Alright, so my nail is ready. I'm going to take 90% alcohol. And I'm going to go ahead and wipe this nail. And I'm going to remove the residue or the remaining gel that didn't cure, the inhibition layer or the tacky layer as most of us know it. And if this is a real client, make sure to always wipe down your uncured product. That tacky layer is uncured gel and you don't want to get it onto the skin. So make sure you wipe down. Let that alcohol evaporate. And then you want to take a look at the surface of the nail and see where you can add a little bit of retouch. Now remember that we use a thin layer of our semi-hard gel here, or sculpting gel. So you don't want to over file. Just really, really let the file do the work and apply very minimal pressure. You'll take your buffer and you'll pass it over the surface of the nail. Gently, if you need retouching, sometimes you're able to touch it and feel any foils. In this case, I actually don't feel any of the uh, paper coming up through the gel. So this is gonna be an easy filing. I just saw a little bit at the edge that I'm gonna retouch, but nothing else really. Again, I'm working with a very gentle buffer, a 220, 280 grit buffer. I'm gonna take my emery board. Emery boards tend to be very gentle and are preferred for natural nail use. And in this case for nail art also, that, so that your grid is not going into your um, nail art and removing whatever you just worked on. You want to one side filing. Clean that one more time with another side of your lint-free towel that you just used. And this is ready for its last step, which would be top coat. Now you're really gonna see your handiwork come through when you apply your top coat. Now the main things that I want you to get from this lesson is that A, you can cut your sections straight from the foil. You don't necessarily need to individually cut pieces off of the foil because again it can get a little messy, static can pick it up and it can get stuck to anything. That's if you want more of like a linear cut. If you do want the triangular kind of cut or maybe other pieces, a little bit more squared pieces, then by all means cut them individually. But for a linear look or linear sections like this, I really just recommend I really just recommend you cutting it from the foil and leaving it on there, okay? So I apply my top coat, and top coat usually is not very thick, but it can still self-level. So give it a moment to self-level a little bit, make sure that everything's perfect, and you cure that for 30 seconds, or as I like to cure my top coat for at least 40 seconds, or uh, 60 seconds a minute, just to make sure that it shines at its finest. So you let that cure, for its time whatever you've decided at least 30 seconds and that would be it remember to cut your strips from your foil so that you avoid a mess you inlay these into wet gel you then trim off the excess you cure then you encapsulate with a builder gel or a base coat depending on your choosing and you can experiment and see what works for you and then buff that and file that with gentle buffers and emery boards. Wipe that down, wipe any dust, and finish with top coat. And you should end up with a really nice glass nail that is very shiny and really, really chic and fun. So give this lesson a try 
If you like our video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like to leave any comments or have any questions, by all means, go ahead and do that in our comment section. And also, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you on our next video.